What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Homie Hangout, where we help others move in excellence. And this story got a lot of layers to it, right? It's it's a war story. It's a street story. It's it's a youth development story. It's a ministry story. It's it's all a bunch of stuff uh, wrapped in one. So so stay tuned for this one, right? And it involves some young people from East Palo Alto, right? Some Northerners, and some young people from Santa Cruz, right? Some Southsiders. Now, Santa Cruz has been in a lot of videos lately because of the whole concert thing. And so uh, I'm going to touch on that just for a second, and, and then I'll move forward with the story. So AC and, uh, or Asito and GB, AC, Asito and GB, right, uh, two Northerner artists, had a show booked in Santa Cruz um, at, at a club. And the city of Santa Cruz, uh, overwhelmingly Southsiders, right, the gang-affiliated people. I don't think there's a lot of affiliated people, period, in Santa Cruz. Um, but of the ones who are, most of them are Southsiders, right? And so uh, these guys go, they have a show booked because most of Santa Cruz County is Northerners. And so it's sold out. The Southsiders, you know, catch wind of it. They go over there. There's some type of a disturbance that leads the club to shut down so that Aceto and GB cannot perform. Uh, I'm assuming they lost out on a bag in that. I don't really get into the whole like who was tougher, who forced who, and did this to who, and who afterwards, and I don't really care. I, I think that misses the point, right? It is yet another example of how this gang shit gets in the way of people moving forward and having some success at non-gang shit, right? So these dudes are artists, they're rappers. Uh, for a lot of rappers, especially you know smaller ones, independent ones, you make more money from shows than you do even from dropping music videos or from putting your music up on Spotify or whatever. You tend to get more from shows. I don't blame on a gang member level, right? Which I'm not, but but I've been there. If I was a kid, uh, I probably would have done the same stuff, right? Like, I get it. These South Sides from Santa Cruz, man, we ain't gonna let these Northerners show up to our town, right? These Northerners, like, man, we're gonna go put on for the homies. So... It makes sense for that childish behavior. But at some point, when are we going to stop being childish, right? Like, gangbanging is a juvenile act. It is a childish mindset, you know? And regardless of what gang or, or anything else, the little mischievous, you know, oh, your hood this and my hood that and beef and stuff when you're kids, okay, fine, right? But at some point, you got to grow up and, and, and you got to have other priorities. And so I just think it's, I think it's messy and, and I think it's unfortunate and I don't think anybody wins, right? Um, so, so anyways, there's that. So this story takes place in Santa Cruz in the mountains. So if you're not familiar with Santa Cruz and you've been seeing these videos, you're like, man, I thought it was a beach community and the boardwalk, and it is. There's also mountains right there. <laughs> there's even a train that goes from the boardwalk up into the mountains close to where I was at, which is a place called Mount Hermon. And it's a Christian retreat. And, and so let me kind of explain for a second, because it, for one, it's it's a campsite, but it's not like a campsite with tents and stuff, right? It's, there's a big church, there's a big chow hall, there's a bunch of houses and kind of cottages and stuff. And some people just live there. Like it's actually a city. There's a little post office, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, so some people just stay there year round. Uh, and then a lot of the property is there for guests who visit. And so they have like a rope course and, and all these huge trees, right? And, and little obstacle course things. You can go on hikes. It's beautiful. It's a very, very beautiful place. It's well known throughout the country and even around the world to some extent. Um, it's been there for, you know, hundred and some odd years. And so they'll have like men's retreats there or couples retreats of different churches or, you know, Christian authors conferences and, just all kinds of stuff. They'll have regular meetings up there that are not faith-based. Um, so, so it's a dope little spot. And I was living in EPA for a long time and uh, I did a lot of ministry work, right? So I'm, I'm a certified chaplain, right? Which is kind of a whole separate thing. But I would do like Bible studies up at Juvenile Hall in, in San Mateo County. Um, and I would hold Bible studies in the hood sometimes and, and speak at different churches. I'm not your traditional kind of Bible thumping dude. Um, but, you know, I, I am a believer, right? That's my belief system. And, and I really enjoyed that, that type of work. And, and I did it in my own kind of way, right? 
so a lot of surrounding churches, East Palo Alto at the time especially, was just very violent, right? A lot of violence, a lot of crime, um, and, and not a lot of resources, right? But it's surrounded by very wealthy communities, you know? So these other churches would donate, right? They would donate to our nonprofits. They would fund trips. They would, you know, fund college scholarships and, and you know, getting uniforms for kids' sports teams, all kinds of different charity type stuff that churches would do. And some of the churches would uh, provide us with like free trips, passes, tickets, whatever, to different conferences up in the Santa Cruz Mountains, all kinds of places. We would go to the Young Life uh, retreats, right, in, in Tahoe. And then there was one up like in Woodleaf. So all over. And anytime I went anywhere, I would try to bring young folks with me, right? Uh, just to give them a break. It, It's not like a... Uh, you know, beat them over the head with, with scripture type stuff. Uh, it's, it's more just get out of the hood, right? Take a break, um, get, you know, get some fresh air, get a little different experience. We would go walking through the mountains. Um, we, we would just have a good time. So this was uh, like a family retreat and a bunch of different churches would, would send people, right, for these weekends. And so we leave EPA on Friday. We go up there. We're back home Sunday night. Uh, and it's myself, two of these youngsters from EPA, uh, who actually lived with me at the time. And uh, my homeboy Conrad, right, he's like an old white convict, but not like the racist white dudes, like the, the gangster hippie white dudes. Um, he did a lot of Bible study and stuff around San Mateo County uh, at the juvenile hall and the different ministries and the recovery community. He tapped me into a lot of resources. So uh, he came up there and then it was my daughter, right, Kayla, she was like an infant. And, um, and and her mom. And so we all had our own little cabin up on this hill. So we go out there. Now, demographic-wise, uh, East Palo Alto is predominantly Raza at the time, right? Now it's gone through this whole big gentrification. There's Amazon and Facebook and stuff, so it's changing a little. And its reputation is as a Black community. It was almost named, you know, Nairobi. They had the free breakfast program and, and the college program and stuff. So it was very much a, a black community for a long time, but it became a brown one. And at this time, when I'm living out there, it is overwhelmingly brown, right? Um, so most of the Rasa, most of the young folks that are affiliated are Northerners. Um, not everybody's necessarily a hardcore gang member. Uh, there are plenty of those, but even the ones that aren't really affiliated, most of them lean that way. There's a couple Southsiders, um, you know, the apartments on East O'Keefe, I lived on the hundred block of Ravina. I had, you know, Southsiders that lived on my street, um, but but not many, you know, not not many at all. Santa Cruz demographics, you know, different. There, it's mostly Southsiders, right? Like I said, so I think there's some more that's from there, but but I don't think they're really a factor. So we go to this retreat, and like I said, I would take folks up there to be a break, right? For for just a vacation from the hood, you know. So we go there, it's Friday night, we're down in the chow hall. There's like this main street where the, the chow hall and the church is. There's a post office across the street from it. And then up this big hill is where our little cabin thing is, right? And so we go down, we're in the chow hall and we're all sitting at a table, right? Just those of us that are in the cabin together um, are, are all sitting at the table, we're eating. And the youngsters, uh, I'll call them both junior, right? Junior one and junior two. So I don't really want to use their real names. Uh, and they're probably going to see this, right? So they're there and they start tripping, right? Off of these dudes working in the kitchen. Hey, what's up with these fools? Hey, she's supposed to keep looking. You got fools me mugging. And I'm like, cut it out, fool. And we'd been up there before. We'd been to other places before. Um, never encountered a problem. Now, one of the juniors is wearing a bright red shirt. I don't care that he's wearing a bright red shirt. Um, there's there's never been an issue at Mount Hermon. Now, at home, I would get on them sometimes about what they wear. They still wear red and stuff, right? But I would be a little more on them. Again, not really for the gang piece in terms of like, you know, South Siders might run up on you. Um, but more just like the law enforcement. Like, you're just being hot walking around like that, you know? And their age, they're like... I'd say like 16, 
17 at the time. Um, they're rough around the edges for sure, right? Uh, they, they're they real active in the streets, right? They had been real active in the streets. Um, in, in all the levels, you picture gang members being active, and I'll kind of leave it at that. And But they were kind of starting to transition, you know, like kind of one foot in, one foot out, you know, still not a punk, still with the business, still with the homies, but not around quite as much, you know? And so that was their thing, but absolutely Northerners, right? And so, like I said, at home, I, I would kind of get on them a little bit about what they would wear and that kind of stuff, just because it, it wasn't, you know, a good look, right? But I didn't care when we went out of town, no matter. And so I'm thinking, man, you guys are tripping. There's no way. And I'm looking and I see the guys that they're talking about, um, you know, two younger Mexican dudes right around their age. Uh, one of them was a lot taller than than my guys. The other one was about their size, but around their age. Um, and, you know, they're bald headed. They weren't like jeans and a t-shirt, khakis and a t-shirt, something like that. But I don't ever see them looking at our table, right? So. Whenever I go to glance or whenever other folks at the table go to glance, we don't see these dudes doing anything or saying anything or, or nothing else. They're just doing their job. They're wiping down tables. They're busting the tables. You know, they're doing their thing. And so I'm telling these guys, bro, you guys are tripping. You're seeing something where it doesn't exist, right? It's this is a hundred and something year old Christian retreat in the mountains. Ain't nobody fucking banging up here, right? And they weren't interested in banging either. So I was like, man, that's the whole, like, you could take the person out the hood, but you can't take the hood out the person part, right? And, and that's kind of what I felt like I was seeing, you know, is, is you guys are tripping. Like, let it go. You know what I mean? Just enjoy it. And again, it wasn't their first time to stuff like this. So like, yeah, man, whatever, right? So we go, I think we went and, and like, got some marshmallow, like, roasted some s'mores. And went for a hike, like, through these mountains, you know, these trees and shit, late at night with a flashlight. It was kind of dope. And, and it was just our chance to get away, man. Just get away from the hood for a little while, you know? And so that's what we did. We're going to come back. We go to the cabin. Nothing to it. Morning time comes. We go, you know, marching down the hill. We go to the chow hall again. We're getting breakfast. And here we go again. And these dudes are back staring at these guys. Now, oh, man, F these dudes and this and that. and and. So then I look and I catch them. I catch these two guys, right? These two kitchen workers. And they're standing at kind of the, the area where they would walk in to go to the back. And they're mean mugging and I catch one of them throwing up a hand sign. And I'm like, oh, here we go, right? Fucking, of all the places. And so I said, look, uh, I'm gonna go talk to these dudes, you know? And I have a real close relationship with my guys, you know, so... Uh, you know, they're being cool, but but also there's only so much somebody can take, right? And and, and they're still from the hood. And so I go back there and I, I see these two dudes working back there. And I pull them to the side and I was like, hey, man, what's, what fuck's the problem? Like, what are you guys doing? Oh, no, man, you know, these dudes are this and that. And I said, so what? So what? Well, I, you know, Southside Ford and Santa Cruz and this is my hood. I said, this is not your hood. It's a mountain. This is Mount Hermon. Is your hood Mount Hermon? Well, now I'm from, you know, beach flats or whatever. Okay, well, this ain't the beach, bro. It's the mountain. Like, you're at work. You know what I mean? You, I've been here a lot of times, bro. They've been here a lot of times. I ain't seen you guys before, but but you're at work. You really gonna mess up your job. Oh, but it's nonsense. They ain't tripping. Why are you tripping? And and so we kind of get into a little bit of an argument, right? Uh, but I'm just telling them, look, this, I don't care where you're from. I don't care where they're from. This doesn't need to happen. This is not going to happen. Let this shit go. Just do your job. Get your money. We're not here for you. They're not paying attention to you. They don't care. But you keep with all these sideways looks and, and all this other stuff, you're creating a situation. Like, be a professional, man. Do your job. You know, again, this is not your hood. It's fucking, it's your job, right? So I felt like we had a bit of an understanding. And in hindsight, I wondered if... This is one of those situations where my background as a northerner kind of didn't help, right? Um, and then I wonder if these dudes viewed me like, oh, well, this is their big homie. Again, this like a bunch of old white people for the most part and families and stuff, not all old and not all white, but a bunch of upper income Protestant churches had sent 
families here. It, it, it's just foolish. But I wonder if through their eyes, it's like, oh, well, you know, that's their big homie. And uh, and he's going to make sure nothing happens. Right. So so they kind of sold out a little bit. I, I don't know. You know, I'm not sure. But I thought it was a done deal. Um, if, if I was more of a square guy, then maybe I could have got through to them a little bit better, you know, and maybe I should have wound up telling some of the folks that worked there because I had a good relationship with some of the leadership at Mount Hermon. Uh, I never brought it up to them, but they would soon find out. Um, and, and I'll get to that in a minute. But so so we leave. Right. We're done with breakfast. We go out. We do like a little rope course. We I think took a nap, you know, like just kind of spent the day doing what we did right taking a break kicking it playing cards and shit talking with some of the other people that were there and then it comes dinner time right and and so for dinner there's like this outside kind of grassy you know auditorium sort of thing right that on this main street right so that you have the the church the chow hall there's this big parking lot uh, church and chow hall and some other buildings right like a bookstore gift shop and shit and then you keep going down that street, and, and that's where this big grassy area is. So we go out there for like burgers and hot dogs and stuff. So we're over there getting dinner, and and this is Saturday, right? And sure enough, you see these kitchen workers, and it's like they're running food, the hot food from the kitchen out to this area where everybody's kind of picnicking at, on on these picnic tables and benches and shit. And these dudes got blue heads now, <laughs> right? So now they got blue barnos. Hanging out their pockets, one on, like on his shoulder. He's acting like he's wiping his sweat with it, but then looking over at my guys. And I'm like, come on, man. Like this, this is not uh de-escalation, right? This is absolute escalation. <laughs> and my guys aren't really tripping. They see it, but now I, I think they've kind of sat with it a little bit and and we've talked about it a little bit, and they've sort of come to terms with like this is lame. You know, and and there's some ego on, on their end, right? There's some arrogance on their end. Um, everybody from East Palo Alto is cocky about being from East Palo Alto, just to be honest, right, in my experience. So there's a, a portion of, like, man, fool, we're really from the hood. You know, and, and these dudes are from the beach. We're really from the hood. We're out here to catch a break. Like, they don't want no smoke, you know, and, and they can go ahead and act like tough guys, man, but we ain't here for that, and, and they don't really want it. And, and that's kind of their attitude. And and I'm reinforcing that. Like, you know, I'm fine with that. You know, whatever keeps this conflict from escalating. And and I'm so I'm not really tripping like I was in the chow hall because my guys seem to be kind of letting it go. And, and now kind of looking at these dudes like they're sort of clowns, right? And I'm not saying that these dudes were clowns. Um, I'm not saying that they weren't serious, you know, about their hood or 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 whatever. You know, it's just... It was juvenile, it was immature, and it wasn't the place or the time for it. And so we go, we have our little burgers, we hang out there a little bit, and we're coming back to go check on my daughter at the cabin. So we're walking down that street, right, that main street, um, and going towards where the kitchen and stuff is on, on the other side. So we're walking, and then we turn at the post office, we start going up the hill, and all of a sudden there's whistles. <laughs> and as soon as the whistles happen, it's over. It's like a button was pushed with my guys and they were done. And their hands go up and some words come out their mouth, letting it be known, you know, where they're from and whatnot. And, and then F you guys. And so now words are, are going back and forth. And I'm like, hey, man, like, be cool. And I'm telling them, hey, knock it the fuck off, bro. And I had already told them before, like, man, you guys don't want to lose a job or nothing. So I'm like, hey, relax. And I'm telling my guys, man, just go back to the cabin. Let's just go back to the cabin, leave them kids alone. It is what it is. And so we're kind of walking up the cabin. My dudes are kind of walking backwards. And these guys coming like, come up the street. Come up here. Because we're way up the hill off that main road. And I figure, you know, we just kind of like, you know, going in the back alley to, to hit, right? It's a similar thing in this case. Uh, but it's up a hill on a mountain. And, and I'm like, no, nah, we'll stay over there. <laughs> right? And stay over there. And they don't. They come across the street. Right? And so I'm trying to get my guy literally pushing them. Like, fool, turn around, just go to the fucking cabin. It's not that serious, right? And these guys are walking slowly, and they got their blue rags out, and they're all flexing. And I'm like, fuck, dude, I can't. 
Like, there's only so much I can do, right? So they wind up getting closer, and they won't fucking shut up, and it's getting loud. And finally, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm done. I'm done with it. And that's why I threw my hands up, and I went walking towards the cabin. And the guys that were coming up the hill kind of backed down the hill a little bit and, and squared off. And and these two juniors, you know, went to press them. And by this point now, there's a couple of people that had been, I guess, done with their burgers or whatever, or come out of their houses or something. I don't know where they came from. But they're like, hey, what's going on up there? Is everything okay? And and so the South starts kind of back up and, and go with those people, right? And that's my food, blah, blah, blah. And it's just words. So all of this posturing and all this puffing chest out and, and, and everything, and really on both sides, it was instigated more on one side, for sure. Um... But, but all for nothing in, in terms of the violence. But there's another point here, right? So, they want to go to the cabin. They're like, this shit was stupid, right? And now the leadership of Mount Hermon is coming up there. Hey, man, what happened? Right? Um, and I'm like, look, there's, you know, a little conflict, but there ain't really nothing to it. And they're like, man, we're going to fire those guys. So, you're going to fire them. And, and this is another point I wanted to make. If... There's a lot of groups, right? Nonprofits or churches or just people, right? Families, whatever, that want to help the hood. And so you're like, man, I want to help those guys from the hood. But then guys from the hood do some hood shit and you want to throw them away all of a sudden, right? And, oh no, never mind. Because I, I only want to help you in the way that I want to help you. And I expect you to just kind of conform and accept that, right? And come to find out, like the staff there, these dudes were from Santa Cruz. Uh, they were on probation. And the leadership of Mount Hermon was like, hey, we have all these events, this and that. But what if we reached out to our local community, right? We have needs in our local community. So they linked up with some high school or continuation school or something down there, um, you know, off the mountain in, in, in Santa Cruz. And, and somehow connected with these guys, right? And gave them a job where they come work up there on the weekends doing exactly what they were doing, kind of busting tables, settling food, that kind of stuff. And in talking to the leadership of Mount Hermon, they're like, we're mentoring them. And I said, but are you? How are you mentoring them? You don't even know that they're affiliated, right? Like you're not equipped to mentor folks from the neighborhood. And, and of course there's some responsibility on these young men for acting stupid at work, right? Of course. Uh, but they're young men, right? Like young men act stupid. And I get that. I work with young men, you know, and, and young women and guys coming home from prison and everything else uh, for most of my time that I've been out of prison. And I see it all the time of, again, people want to help the hood until the hood acts like the hood. Then all of a sudden, oh my God, you guys are fucking animals and go walk away. And all it does is reinforce this idea that everybody's disposable. That, that it's not actual help and it's not actual support. It's like, man, you just want to feel better about helping me, but you're not really helping me. You don't know how to help me. And and for a lot of these young folks, they don't even know the help that they need, right? If, if they had the answers, they would do it. Um, they're still trying to figure it out. And, and so I told them, like, I wouldn't fire these guys, you know, but you, if you're going to take on this responsibility, hey, we're going to get some kids, from the neighborhood that has some challenges and some issues and we're going to bring them and put them under our wing, then you really got to put them under your wing. It's more than just, hey, I'm going to pay you a couple bucks for you to come up here and bust some tables and that's going to somehow transform your life because not all the challenges are about money. They're not necessarily out there banging. And I'm going to assume that these dudes was really about that life, right? Um, in, in their neighborhood. So they're not only doing that because they're poor. Right? Maybe they're poor, maybe they're not. They're not only doing that because they don't have a job. Giving somebody a job is not a recipe to transforming their life. Sometimes it is, but especially with teenagers and young folks or folks that have been in a joint for a very long time and, and haven't really done the work on themselves, it's more than just a job. Right? It's There's healing that needs to be happened. There, there's, there's more work that needs to be done. And if that doesn't happen, then nothing else matters, which is why you have dudes who will get a good job and F off the job over a sideways look because now if I know punk, I'm going to stand my ground. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that, which is reckless. It's why you have people 
like Lefty, who like, man, I don't even care that all these people watch it. I got the banger. I'll mess it all up. I'll go ride tonight, this and that. And sure, some of it is posturing, but I also think some of it is probably pretty real in the sense of at least thinking that way, right? So it, it's a cautionary tale. And I'm curious if you guys have seen situations like that or have been a part of those situations, either from the person that people say they want to help, but then all of a sudden, you know, kind of throw you to the wolves or the one trying to help, but then realize you're over your head. Because working with young folks from the hood that are really caught up in that hood shit, right? Rasa, black, Polynesian, white, north, south, the shit don't matter. Working with young folks that are gang influenced in the hood is a challenge, right? And you don't have to be from the hood to do it. And not just because you're from the hood, does that mean that you're good at it? Uh, I've seen a lot of people in mentorship roles similar to mine, where as soon as this would have happened, as soon as these dudes in the kitchen gave a dirty look to these guys at the table, they'd have told the guys at the table, bro, you better go around and build it and handle that shit, right? Because those old attitudes kick in, you know what I mean? Those, those old biases, yeah, fools, let these dudes punk you, get off. That's not healthy, mature adult thinking, right? It is teenager thinking. But if you're mentoring teenagers, you're supposed to help them think a little bit different. That's the whole fucking idea of being a mentor. So, but I get it is a lot of us, even as mentors, we got our own stuff that, that we haven't worked through yet. We want to help, um, but we also feel some type of way about certain things. And, and so it's just complicated, man. And, and it's tricky. And it keeps a lot of people who could really be helpful from wanting to engage. And it creates space for a lot of people who their heart is in the right place, but they don't have the skill set to, to do this kind of work. Like, um, it's not for everybody. I, I did a video. I'll try to link to it. I think there. Um, I was shot at a couple times in East Palo Alto, right? It's, it's, my house was shot at by Southsiders. Um, and my car was shot at, at the G Market right around the corner from my house by Northerners because there was a dude I had in the car taking the soccer. Like, it... Not everybody doing hood work gets shot at. Don't get me wrong. Um, I didn't take it personal. I, I one of them I did, so I went and knocked on his door. I was like, hey, four, fuck you, shoot it at my truck. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is. Not every situation is, is going to lead to that, and it kind of depends on the type of folks you're dealing with. But it's rough work, and and it requires us to be disciplined. Um, and, and not everybody is, and so. If you're not equipped for it, don't even do it, right? Or figure out how to become equipped. So with these young men at, at Mount Hermon, as far as I know, they didn't lose their jobs. Um, I'm guessing like their probation didn't get violated or anything else. You know, there was no cops involved. You know, that that came while we were there at least. Um, and, and that was it. The next morning, uh, those guys weren't working in the kitchen. Uh, and they said that they gave them the day off of work, you know, just to kind of let stuff cool down. Um, but I try to get at them and say, Hey, you know, myself and a couple other people that really do this, we could set up a training for your staff. If this is what you want to do, that's beautiful. Let's have a conversation about kind of some of the normal best practices of doing it though. And, and they said, yes, they were like, man, it's 130, 140 year history of, of Mount Hermon. This is our first gang conflict. We've never dealt with this. We didn't know these dudes were gang members. You know, your guys came from a gang area. We didn't know any of this stuff. Um, and we didn't recognize any of the signs, you know, and still don't see the signs. We still don't know how the hell this happened. And so I was like, cool, let us come through and, and, and kind of help you. Right. They said yes, but they, they never took us up on the offer. And so anyways, I actually have other situations, um, that, that are kind of similar that have transpired at other camps. So maybe I'll get into those another time, but, uh, you guys let me know, man. Like, like, what do you think? Could different things have been done? through this to, to make it look different. You know, did I do the right thing? Um, you know, I'm, I'm always open to your feedback. So help others move with excellence. That's what homies do. Help yourself at the same time because you're worth it. Help your community because they need you. And, and stay tuned because I'm be flooding you guys with content, man. Seriously. All right, take care.